And it wouldn't be Friday without some crypto talk. From equities to crypto, Bitcoin seen there in the blue. I have to squint at that, my poor, poor old eyes. Only lifting largely off the, lo off the lows after El Salvador passed the legislation to accept the coin as legal tender. Ethereum, in the meantime, that normally tracks Bitcoin, continues on its downward trajectory. I just see, yeah, two, squig I just see two squiggly lines on a chart. <laughs> right, we well, can see that dramatic drop there, but sure trying can. to summer recovery, that's after that huge sell-off, but uh, pretty much tracking. But yeah, Ethereum um, underperforming at this point, um, Bitcoin having lifted to an extent. Let's uh, take a little deeper dive there into those crypto, market, crypto markets. So we're joined by Ian Lowe from Daxi. Ian, good to talk to you. Good to be with you. All right, so that volatility continuing. Just We mentioned obviously there at the top as far as what El Salvador is doing. They've officially adopted Bitcoin as a, a currency there, which mm. it's interesting because it, it's obviously, it's had the US dollar that it's uh, effectively used as a currency. So what are you seeing there? Um, I, I, do you think it's a good idea? Never, never a dull moment in, in crypto, right? <laughs> uh, it it's, continues to be a really interesting ride. So, first of all, your point is right. Um, uh, in El Salvador, the currency is essentially the US dollar. And so the adoption of Bitcoin uh, is is adopting Bitcoin as a, as a currency in parallel with the US dollar, not instead of. So that, that that's the first thing. Th this is how we believe, um, particularly emerging economies, which might be a little euphemistic, but emerging economies like El Salvador will, will, will walk this path. It won't be a replacement. It'll be in parallel with at least for a period. Some interesting numbers on El, El Salvador. We went away and had a, had a closer look at this. Um, the GDP of El Salvador is $27 billion. So it's, you know, on a global stage, it's, it's, a, it's a small economy. But, but an, I think a much more interesting data point is that the population of El Salvador living in El Salvador is six and a half million people. But there are two and a half million El Salvadorians living in the US. And so the president in the announcement alluded to this idea of removing barriers or friction around transactions between El Salvadorians living in the US uh, where they're essentially trying to get money back into El Salvador. Uh, and I think this is probably uh, one of the primary objectives. It's, it's about making it easier for money to come back into the country, uh, in particular from, from countries like the US. So th that's really what you know, we think this is probably about. M more generally, uh, they've made, you know, made statements around the need for innovation, um, that this constitutes an innovation that will drive investment, uh, employment, and, and things of that nature. And of course, El Salvador could really only be described as a as a relatively unregulated market. Um, so, unregulated markets, uh, smaller economies; these will be the first movers in adopting cryptocurrencies as a pseudo currency for for, uh, for the country more generally. And going from one extreme to the other, from an unregulated economy to a command economy, because anything that China does tends to have a bigger impact on the price. Like if China bans crypto because of its you know, lack of green footprint, for example, or in terms of ulterior motives, it's because they want the population to use their digital one. So for every El Salvador, there's a China. So volatility is going to continue, right? Yeah, absolutely. And look, you, you, you make a really good point. You know, the common ground between El Salvador and China is that they both believe in the underlying technology uh, and, and the progression towards digital assets more generally. But thereafter, I think, you know, there is almost no common ground. The, the objectives of, of those two nations are bifurcated very, you know, very unambiguously. And so, uh, you know, China in every sense is a a highly regulated, if I can use that, that term, a highly regulated market, a very centralised economy. And so their objectives around digitisation of, of currency are really pursuant to those, those current positions. It's a, a continuum of that, of that existing position. So using blockchain technology, um, the underlying technology to further centralise uh, rather than to benefit from decentralisation. Um, 
China sees innovation as a tool, whereas a country like El Salvador may see it as a destination in, unto itself. Ian, anyone I speak to in this space is saying the recent sell-off has been good. It, it's sort of the shakeout that was required, you know, given the bubble that had developed in a lot of those those crypto coins. I'm interested to just get your point of view as to what is next, what, what is driving the market at the moment. Are you seeing this volatility, this extreme volatility continuing? Um, what, what are the inflection points you're looking for? Yeah, look, it's a good question. It's it's the pervasive question, isn't it? Which is, you know, what's going to happen next? Oh, look, the volatility, in our view, the volatility will continue. I mean, this is going to play out over many market cycles. Um, and so, you know, traders will take a day-to-day -day view. Um, we take more of an investor's view, which is looking at, um, you know, the, the, the underlying proposition of these, these different crypto coins over the medium to longer term. And so our advice, um, certainly to our customers, is, is to be an investor rather than being a trader. And so that means doing the work, understanding the use cases, form a view, and take a medium to longer term uh, you know, position. And so I'll, I'll, I'll use a few numbers just to, to put that in context. If we look at the last 12 months, the gold market is up, gold price is up 9%. Um, the all ordinaries are up 24%. Uh, over that same period of time, Bitcoin is up 300% and Ethereum is up 1,000%. So looking at it on a day by day, week by week basis um, is really for the traders. Uh, the investor really needs to go through the education process, form a view and take a position based on that view and, and look at it over multiple cycles, the medium to longer term. And so, you know, to, to your question about what do we look for next? We would encourage people to take a, a macro view of, of the crypto market more generally. And so we've talked a little bit about what's happening with governments. Really what we're saying is look at some of the develop, developments more generally in the space. So the emergence of new investment funds that are geared in some way or, or entirely to uh, the crypto market or, or individual coins within that market they are significant developments. Um, banks and their participation in the industry, uh, you know, I think it's well understood, City, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, banks like this are, are not just participating, but in, in participating in a, in a, in a, at a higher and higher level. Um, so that, that, that they are significant developments. A really significant development um, that we've seen are the payments providers saying that well, we can now actually close the loop, if you like, or offer an end-to-end -end solution where people who acquire crypto can actually now spend in crypto. Uh, and so one view might be that payments providers simply have to participate in the crypto landscape because as a payment provider, um, they risk um, being disintermediated themselves. But the reality is that these payments providers offering uh, or enabling their platforms with crypto is hugely um, significant as it relates to the acquisition and then the actual um, uh, the redemption of crypto uh, as a as a fiat currency equivalent. So, very very significant developments. And then one other development that I just point to that um, uh, in closing that I think is worth making is that Google recently announced that they were now going to permit. Uh, crypto exchange advertising and wallet solution providers uh, advertising, which previously was was uh, was banned. So we're going to look for an announcement in July where they will uh, uh, make it clear what the certification process looks like. Uh, but they've already announced that advertisers are allowed back into the fold, but they do need to meet you know local regulations and deal with uh, local established financial institutions. Um, in order to qualify, but th these are all, you know, indicators of you know the the long term proposition, uh, the long term um, uh, prognosis, if you like, for for crypto generally. Ian, great to get your perspective from Daxi. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.